to the Outlaunch Control Center. There's a P side to the building and an R side to the building. And so there's been a lot of debate as to why there's a P side and an R side. Well, the rooms are numbered floor first, one, two, three, four. Then the next there's either a P or an R and then a room number. So we kind of looked around at why that was. And uh, so there were some people were saying the primary side of the building or the redundant side of the building. Well, one of the thing, the theory that has the most water is that uh, when they built the VAB, uh, they started labeling the towers in the VAB with A, B, C, D, E, F. And so when they got done using all the letters, what was left was, you know, P. And so where'd Q go? You know, P, where, what happened to Q? Well, Q and O look a lot alike, so they threw those out. So do I and J, so they threw those out. And so all the letters have been used uh, all the way up to P. And so the LCC has a P and an R side just because they're in the row in the alphabet. One other peculiarity is that there is no H or G tower, and that's because the VAB was designed in concept uh, and preparation for having two more whole high bays. And so right now there's four huge high bays, and they had plans for two more. And so that's where the G and the H tower are. They're not, they're not built. And so um, I've asked quite a few people as to whether they knew it was uh, P, and, P and R, and, and I had very few people that had their answers. So, so that's the prevailing theory. So. Everybody likes traditions. Uh, there's a couple traditions that are um, prevalent in the LCC. Um, one, one quick one is the first, the first uh, time you, as a launch director, you, you get your tie cut. And so Charlie Blackwell's our launch director, so she's got a big picture in her office getting her tie, tie, tie cut. Uh, so the other big tradition is after we have a successful launch, they would cook beans and cornbread. Now it started out as a focus thing for some of the management that they would have you know, a big plate of beans and cornbread, but then it kind of moved like, hey, well, you know, let's get the whole team. And so we actually had to go install some power outlets to handle all the, the bean crock pots and cornbread to, to, do, to, to handle the, the launch team. But it became a point for, it's kind of a, a de-stress point. Uh, you've, been, you've been working hard, you've been very focused, you've been up working a lot of hours that week, getting ready for the launch. It's, it's not just the launch, it's the launch campaign. So it gets very intense the, the couple of weeks before launch doing activity. And so this is just a, a stress valve relief where you can, you can stand next to the launch director and, and uh, you know, there's no, there's no class system, uh, you know, there's no tiered row. Everyone uh, gets in line, has beans and cornbread. So we need to come up for the GSDO program. I, I think we, we could do beans and uh, cornbread again, but I, we probably ought to do something different. Uh, maybe hot dogs. I like hot dogs, but uh, um, that'd be fun. So I love to, to give tours at the LCC. There's, there's a couple reasons. I always say there's, there's two reasons why they do that. I, I'm an engineer, I can't count, so I'll end up with more than two, so I put five fingers up. But I get a, I get a, lot, of, I get a lot of high school students through there. I get a lot of different, uh, uh, I get some colleges through there. I've had some people from MIT. Um, uh, I have a lot of people. And so I, I like to do that for, for a few reasons. Uh, number one, it's in my performance evaluation, so I'll take that. Um, no, number two, I, we, we're open for business, and so that's 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 what other one. NASA is fully functional, and we're operation we're operating today. But but personally, I, I like to talk to the students. Um, when when I went to school, I, I'm a bit dyslexic, and that's kind of terrible for an engineer. But it it turns out that it's okay because that means you you double check everything, and engineers double and triple check everything. So when I talk to when I talk to the students when they come in. I like to tell them that uh, there's a, a very important tool that I'm going to give them today that uh, will be the most important tool that they'll ever have in their life, and that tool is, is themselves. And so the best way to take care of that is to invest in it. And so, you know, get an education, learn, fi find something you like to do. If, if you're passionate about it and you like to do it, you'll do well. And learn how to do it better than anybody else. If you learn how to do it better than anybody else, people will ask you to come work for them. They will pay you money for that. Not only will they pay you money, but you'll enjoy what you're doing. You'll, you'll reap the benefits personally that it, you'll have pride, more pride in yourself. And so whenever you in, invest in yourself, uh, it's, you're going to get the best return on any investment you ever can. So go to school. If you like math and science and that's your thing, then get into that. A additionally, um, companies don't hire you to sit back and be quiet. They, they hire you because you've learned these things. And, you need to speak out and 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 show that uh, you know these things. Uh, you need to work work through issues, and you have opinion, and that you have a technical expertise, and they will start to respect that. 
And so, you know, just don't sit back and wait for everything to go by. You know, be a part of the process. Learn. That engineering process we talked about, that project management process, it doesn't work if you don't have people in there that aren't skillful and knowledge and trained and have an, have an opinion about how things to go and can work together as a team to, uh, to accomplish, accomplish goal, a main goal.